Hello guys, welcome to another session. In this session, we are going to discuss about Ansible overview. So in this section, majorly I will discuss with you two things. One is what was the problem and after that I will discuss about the architecture details. So in early days, the problem was system administrator usually perform repetitive tasks such as installing servers, configuring those servers. And these tasks will be performed on many servers so again and again. So these tasks are automated with the script. But the problem with the script is that it is very cumbersome to write those script and very unmanageable if the script is going long. And it is quite problematic if the infrastructure is large. So to solve this problem, configuration management was introduced. So basically configuration management is nothing but a practice of handling changes systematically. So that means configuration management ensures that the current design and the build state of the system is known and good and trusted and doesn't rely on the hectic knowledge of development. It also allows the flexibility to access the historical record of system state for project management and audit purpose. So in short, configuration management overcome various challenges like figuring out which component to change when requirement change. No more manual rework since requirement has changed. No more redoing and implementation. It also gives us the flexibility to reverting to a previous version of the computer if you have placed with a new but flawed version. Sometimes it happens that due to large infrastructure, the wrong component has been replaced. So in such scenario, configuration management will give us the flexibility to revert it back whatever the earlier state of the environment is. Hello guys, let's discuss about the architecture of Ansible. So when you install Ansible, it will deploy orchestration engine and that orchestration engine runs two major files. One is inventory and another one is playbook. The inventory file contains the details about the servers which we want to manage and the playbook file uses these inventory as a single source of truth to apply the changes on the infrastructure. So let's look how this inventory file looks like. So this is the inventory file where we have seven entries of machines. So this diagram is a illustration of the Kubernetes cluster. In this cluster, it has one load balancer and three master machine and three worker machine. So basically on these seven machines, the task has been performed on these seven machines and those task is coming from playbook. So let's look into the playbook. For now, just understand that playbook is having the roles and roles is nothing but a task, a smaller task which is being chunked out in different different roles and those roles is doing some activities within these servers. And those activities is placed within the module. So for example, if we want to deploy any module, so those module is being listed over here. So to iterate it once again, if you closely look into that, it, the architecture is pretty much straightforward. So if you see that we have already discussed that uh, it has two files. May One is inventory, another one is playbook. And inventory file contains the information about the machines where we want to apply the changes and those things will be mentioned within playbook. So what does playbook contains? Playbook contains the information about the task which we are going to perform on the machines which is mentioned within the inventory. Here you must be getting some of the words which you don't bother about now. With those words, I am going to discuss all those things in more detail when we will discuss the core component of uh, Ansible. That time I will discuss in more detail what is role is, what is task, what is module, what is play, what is facts variable, handlers, all those things I will discuss in more detail when I will discuss about the core component. For time being, you just understand that. So these are some of the important details about the architecture of Ansible. So one of the beauty of this architecture is that there is no other client software is being installed on Node machine. 
so how does it connect so you must be thinking that how does it connect so basically it uses ssh connection to connect to the nodes so that means ansible will only need to be installed on a controller machine which can sits on your laptop as well one of the thing which you must know about ansible is that it is an agentless so what does it mean by agentless so basically agentless means there are no agent software or additional firewall port need to be configured when you are installing ansible no additional setting will be required for automation of the client machine another one of the good thing about ansible is that it is an extensible that means suppose if any module is not available then you can write your own that is out of scope in this course but i will provide you the link which you will use it for module development so these are the some of the architectural overview which i wanted to discuss with you in this session so in the next session i will discuss with you the core component of ansible that is very much important so that's it guys for this session see you in the next session thank you